He's a mind blown! Greetings, subjects. This is your overlord. And these are my Black Ops 2 first impressions. Part 1, multiplayer. Part 2 will focus on zombies. So, the first thing I noticed upon loading up multiplayer was the barracks section. Uh, usually the first thing I notice in Call of Duty games. Uh, the create an emblem is back, uh, which I kinda was happy about. And uh, Treyarch's dull menu design returns as well. Uh, and I'll point out that I think Treyarch has a lot of talent, and they make good games most of the time, but their menus always look like crap. Don't know why, but they do. Uh, it's a minor complaint that doesn't really affect gameplay, but I feel the need to mention it every time they come out with a new game. Hopefully they'll figure it out sometime. Uh, in this game particularly, they kind of hid everything in a maze of convoluted menus, which makes it a little more irritating. Uh, the create a class option specifically has been moved from its normal location in the multiplayer menu. Uh, now you have to actually go to like get ready to search for a public match before you can even make a class. Uh, it's it's very uh, not not odd uh, awkward place to put it. It, it makes sense. <laughs> they. Uh, they did it to allow for the league playlist to have their own custom class options. So you have to go into, you know, public match to do classes for that, and then, you know, private match for classes for that, and then league matches for classes for that. So it makes perfect sense why they did it. It's just in a, kind of an awkward spot. Um, and several people did ask me where it was when we were playing, and I hadn't had the game any longer than they had. Um, they also renamed Killstreaks, uh, to Scorestreaks, which, you know, is an accurate name, uh, it makes perfect sense again, uh, but they didn't really tell anybody they were doing it, uh, unless you watch YouTube videos in preparation of the launch or whatever, you would have no knowledge of this game other than the fact that it was going to have zombies and multiplayer because there was no advertising on this game which was a huge excuse me oversight on their part they really should have had some sort of actual like let us know you know let us get a sneak peek at uh, a single gun or something to to wet people's appetites at bad advertising which not really first impressions noteworthy i guess but felt like mentioning it anyway <laughs> Um, as for the actual score streak things, because there was no warning, because nobody even knew they were going to do that unless they're hardcore, watch YouTube every single day and watch every YouTuber, nobody knew that it was going to be called score streaks until day one. And so there was a lot of people, level 20 something, level 30 something, just in multiplayer lobbies asking me how to change their kill streaks. You know, not necessarily me specifically, but you know, asking the lobby as a whole how to change their kill streaks. And uh, I was at first the only person who knew it. I mean, it was obvious to me because I saw score streaks right there, and uh, you know, it was one of those things where you just immediately get curious and click on it. But everybody else seemed to be having a problem finding it. So uh, you know, I, I think again that was less of a menu issue and more of an advertising issue. Um, but let's let's uh, skip past uh, that stuff and uh, go back to the create an emblem feature. Uh, I was a little disappointed in it. Um, in the original Black Ops I enjoyed the uh, emblem create an emblem thing. Uh, it was nice to be able to actually make my own kind of symbol and uh, while I didn't, wasn't super happy with the image that I came out with overall, uh, I did find that I, I, I liked being able to do it, and once I had prestiged and unlocked a few more icons and whatever, I could uh, make something halfway decent, and it was cool. 
but now they seem to have removed a lot of the images like there was like nothing available and I don't mean you know I'm level 5 and I can't make a cool emblem I mean I'm looking at everything I can unlock and I can't even make the emblem I had in the original Black Ops and to me that seems dumb I can't put I can't put that any nicer it just seems dumb to have removed so many images um, some games have a habit of showing you five things and then letting you unlock more stuff later on down the road that you're not allowed to know you're going to unlock. Halo has a bad habit of doing this, <laughs> where just randomly they're like, look, there's new items going to be unlocked in five levels. Why don't you tell me that at the beginning? What, like, I had nothing to look forward to till just now. Uh, so it's possible that Black Ops 2 will do that, because that is becoming more popular as games are made nowadays. But it, it is kind of sad in me, you know. I'm only level 17, so like I said, more stuff may randomly appear as I level, but... Uh, right now I'm, I'm really disappointed with the created emblem. Uh, <clears throat> but we can skip the bad menus for... I mean, not skip the bad menus, but we'll go off the bad menus for now, and... Uh, Let's move on to actual gameplay, because that's the important part of this. Um, I like that they took the weapon level up system from Modern Warfare 3. I like that, uh, that was one of my favorite additions from that game, was I like that now, instead of just getting, you know, I mean, generally, you're just getting kills with your gun. It's the same as it's always been, but the fact that it's got an XP progression bar makes it feel better you know it feels really good to see you know weapon level rank up or whatever you know and so you're leveling up your weapon and you're leveling up yourself and so you know it, it just feels really good and of course it's a it's a better way um, aesthetically to unlock pictures and whatever so you know I like that addition in it it's nice and with all of the insane amount of attachments that we have now, it is uh, definitely easier to wait for an attachment if you see that little XP bar rather than counting kills. Um, I was disappointed that I still have to spend hours upon hours unlocking guns only to not actually be able to use them. Uh, this is the worst thing in Black Ops 1 multiplayer and there were a lot of bad things in Black Ops 1 uh, so the the worst thing was that I'm you know I'm level I'm max level I'm getting ready to prestige and I still don't have access to every gun because they wanted me to spend money on them and I got to the point in the original that you would basically couldn't get every gun unless you were winning a lot of really high wager matches. And I, I don't know, I, it seems really stupid, because it's like, why am I bothering to level up if I'm still not unlocking guns? I, don't, I mean, I'm level 17 and I've got three guns, basically. What was the point of getting to level 17? Uh, although they did, uh, they did seem to take that away from... Uh, like attachments and perks, no perks you still have to buy. Attachments and wild cards you automatically get. I think. I could be wrong. I might have paid for my wild cards. I don't remember. That's a new feature, by the way, uh, which I will get to later. But I, I, I did like I didn't have to pay for the attachments. I got them automatically when I leveled up the gun. Um. But. Uh, purchasing weapons that have already basically unlocked according to the game is the in-game equivalent of making me go to the gym for six months and then telling me need, I need to pay twenty dollars if I want to show people my muscles. Yeah, you know, it's like I spent all that time getting them. I should be allowed to do whatever I want with them. But I digress. Um, the thing that made me not completely rage uh, at this stupid system that they brought back is the fact that private matches whether they're online or offline you 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 have everything permanently unlocked so you can do whatever you want 
Uh, you can have whatever kind of classes you want, whatever kind of perks you want, all that stuff. Uh, and so you can try it out with your friends and, and just mess around and fight bots and whatever. So you can test out stuff so that when you do uh, level up, instead of wasting all of your COD points or whatever they're calling them now, uh, purchasing weapons that you don't know if they're good or not, you can already know, uh, assuming that you play offline more often than you play public matches. Um, but it, it's a nice touch. Uh, apparently they they feel that the COD point purchase system is vital to their game's survival, uh, which I disagree with, but because that's something that they creatively decided they were going to keep, they did take that effort to kind of keep the fans happier, <laughs> to kind of, you know, fan service, to kind of let you have a way to know what to buy and what not to buy, so you're not just wasting all those COD points that they, for some reason, feel are important. Um... The creative class system, since we're talking about COD points and whatnot, is, like, it's all new. It's, like, ground up, revamped, uh, you know, the, at this point in the game, their killstreak options are no longer, uh, new anymore. Now they're just rehashing old ideas, both from themselves and from the other Call of Duty games, just because there's not a whole lot left to do with killstreaks. So now they're kind of focusing on the creative class system. Uh, eventually, they'll just run out of things completely to make all new, but it's nice that they're still trying. Um, so the creative class system now uses what I have heard dubbed the 10-point system. Uh, I don't know if that's the official title or if that's just what people call it. I like it. Um, but now you no longer basically have to pick a primary and a secondary and a uh, and three perks and then a, and a grenade and whatever. You you actually get ten points, and everything you put in your class costs one point. So it's possible to have a class with literally nothing but a combat knife. Um, which you know, if you decide to for some reason add perks to that combat knife then you can have a knifing only class with no gun in hand which means even if you did accidentally hit the trigger you're still knifing <laughs> um, and uh, I immediately upon discovering that my first thought was only use me blade is in heaven uh, because now with the wildcard system you can have up to six perks uh, you know officially uh, plus you know, or you can end up with like maybe four official perks, but then two wild cards that work like perks. Uh, so, so it's it's kind of like you have instead of three perks, you have six perks. You know, because the wild cards, for the most part, act like perks. Um, so, using the wild card system, uh, the first one you get is just an extra perk one. So, you know, you spend a point on your perk one. And then you spend a point on the wild card that gives you an extra perk. And then you have to spend a third point on a new perk one. Like on a second perk one. So you're still technically spending three points for two perks. But you're getting more perks than they had initially planned for you to. Um, and they, they do that on purpose so that you can kind of... Because there's... I have been complaining since... Well, not, well, not really complaining, I guess, for this particular... I, I do complain about things, but this particular uh, subject, I have been asking for a while for them to allow me to have Scavenger and Sleight of Hand at the same time. Because no matter how they arrange the perks, somehow they always end up to be in the same perk slot. And there are a lot of times when I'm playing uh, like Free For All or whatever where it would be really useful to have Sleight of Hand and Scavenger. So I've been asking to be able to have two perk ones, you know, to be able to maybe remove my perk three and get a perk, an extra perk one or something. And the wild card system definitely, definitely gives you that option and makes it makes it a lot of fun. Um, so like I have, 
you know, I mean, went ahead and made all five of my classes. My my main class that I use just follows normal class restrictions. I've got two guns and a you know, three perks and a grenade and a tactical grenade because that's how I like that class. Uh, but my capture the flag class now has five perks, two primary weapons, and uh, a single tactical grenade and a single stun grenade. So, you know, I've got no frags, I don't have a second stun grenade, because you can actually choose when you pick stun grenades or smoke grenades or whatever, if you want one or two, and it costs one or two points, so that's really cool. And I, once I, I think once I get it high enough level to unlock the wild card that's called Tactician, uh, I'll be able to completely revamp the class again, because that will be very nice to have basically four tactical grenades. Um, and I have messed around with the shot grenades a little bit in uh, offline, and I really want to play with those in line, so that'll be cool. Uh, right now, building a class is so much fun, uh, much like building a deck in a collectible card game. Uh, I just kind of want to prestige, just so I have extra classes to build, because I am enjoying building classes. Uh, of course, that's assuming prestige unlocks are still in the game. Uh, I assume that the extra classes will still be in the game, as that's something that I th think Treyarch started. So that'll probably still be in the game, but I don't I don't know if there'll be anything extra like Modern Warfare 3 did. Um, uh, moving on to the guns. <laughs> the guns feel very good in my hands, even if the initial unlocks are not my style. Um, I, know, I wasn't really feeling the vibe with most of them. Uh but they they do they are nice guns. It's just not my playstyle. Um every Call of Duty has a gun with a random looking reload animation that I find so very charming. It, it makes the game kind of more enjoyable to just see these reload animations and kind of guess what the next one will be. Uh right now I'm running an SMG uh, it is the second one that you get, and it relo reloads like an old camcorder. Uh, it Every time I have to reload, it looks like I eject a VHS from the side, like a camcorder, and then put like a new one in, and it, it's really cool. You know, the, the little things matter. <clears throat> the, uh, sorry about that, the matches are very fast-paced. I mean, it's a little faster paced than I would like, ideally. Um, Modern Warfare 3 uh, did this as well. So that, you know, if you're used to the older games, it it's, takes a little bit, it takes, a, you know, three or four matches to really get used to the speed at which it goes. Um, but, you know, it, you, you do get used to it. Um, and a lot of people seem to like it, so I'm I'm okay with them speeding it up uh, for the sake of the rest of the fans, because it doesn't really make me play any worse. It's just a little disorienting. Um, uh, you know, and I'm already starting to win most of my games, so it's it's really not a huge deal. Um, but since I have mentioned Modern Warfare 3 a couple times, and I know some people are gonna flip out because Apparently, people people discovered that they didn't like that game way faster than they discovered that they didn't like the other games in the series, which is weird for me because it was wasn't actually a worse game. Um, but I, I didn't like it because it was exceedingly difficult for some reason. But uh, everybody else talks about how good of a game it is, but then nobody plays it. So I don't know. Some people get mad when I compare Black Ops to Modern Warfare. Uh, and, but Black Ops 2 multiplayer feels a lot like Modern Warfare 3. You know, it's you're running around, you feel like you're hyped up on everything. You know, you, you know the sensitivity is still the same. You know, whatever sensitivity I played on in every other game I play on in this one, but the guns seem to shoot a little faster, or some of them do, and the the, the fights themselves, like I think I have less health than I used to. In, in the original Black Ops. Um, you know, a lot of the maps feel really familiar, and not just familiar from a Treyarch standpoint. Because, uh, you know, there are a couple I saw that kind of made me think of Black Ops 1, uh, but then there are a couple I saw that made me think of Modern Warfare 2. 
uh, not necessarily like in layout or anything, but like the art style, which was surprising because Black Ops or Treyarch art style is generally pretty bad. So I I was kind of weird that I felt like this familiar Modern Warfare vibe to some of the guns and the maps and stuff. But then I think that's because we're doing future now, so it's all modern. So now we have modern weapons and things like that, and I think that just that makes it feel familiar without actually being familiar. Um, but that's just me, you know. I don't I don't find Black Ops 2 to be nearly as difficult as Modern Warfare 3. Uh, but other than that, they're very similar uh, initial impressions. I'm sure once I level up, there'll be you know a lot more nuances that I will enjoy or not enjoy or whatever, but I right now it's it's a very similar initial feel. Um, on day one I had three game modes that I made notes about. Uh, generally it was similar to what it was before. Uh, we'll start with Hardpoint, which is a new game type, and it's basically moving King of the Hill. Um, also known as Crazy King and a couple other shooters I've played, um, which was a good addition. It's something that Call of Duty actually, I was surprised, never got introduced before. Uh, you know, it's a very, very nice game type. It lends itself well to the style of gameplay. Um, and it's King of the Hill has always been that perfect uh, mix between objective and... Uh, slayer game player game types so you know the people who literally just like to kill people well you know where people are gonna be you've got you know you've got this like perfect setup to kill people and if you're standing in the hill then you're never gonna run out of fights um, so you know I, I think it, it lends itself really well to the style of gameplay and it's good it, it kind of encourages people to work together which I'm like and everybody Everybody on my friends list is okay if we play uh, Hardpoint, whereas some of us don't like Team Deathmatch, and most of them don't like Capture the Flag. So I, I liked it as a as a new addition. A um, uh, note about Domination. Um, lots of notes about Domination. They broke Domination. Um, it was done, as far as I can tell, in an effort to battle complaints. Uh, about domination, there's uh, there's a lot of complaints about people. Uh, you know, the other team got the quote unquote good spawn, so you know we spawned at sea, so there's no way we could possibly win, and which is complete BS. And it's just a bunch of people being trolls and calling the ambulance. But the Treyarch decided that they were going to battle that. They were going to. At, at this point, it seems like they were going to troll the trolls. Um, so they split each match into two rounds. So instead of just now going from 0 to 200, you're actually going from 0 to... Uh, I think if you triple cap, you can hit about 150 or so before the round ends. Um, so you know, it ends basically halfway through the time limit. And then it wipes all the flags clean like nobody has them, keeps your points, and then flips your initial spawn. So, if you spawned at the quote-unquote bad spawn, well, then the second half, you spawn at the good spawn. And, uh, again, it's complete BS, because uh, after playing three matches of it, people were already complaining about how they were they couldn't win because they got the bad spawn the first time. Which doesn't make sense, because you got the good spawn the second time, doofus. Um, and it doesn't, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't really make the game any more fair at all. Because, uh, you know, the better team, regardless of spawn, always double caps, and sometimes triple caps, because they're good domination players. Bad domination players are still complaining. Um, but the time limit is the hu the worst issue in this new domination. The time limit, you know, if you double cap, gets you about 105 points, maybe. Um but generally it gets me about 90-something when I'm playing. And so, well, that means that I don't hit the 200 score cap ever. Um, I played about 10 games of Domination on day one, and I hit the score limit twice. And we won seven of those ten. 
So I, I don't... It, that There's not nearly enough time to hit the score limit. And that just... That means that there's no coming back. You know, if you're losing, you're losing. You're going to lose. There's no way to make a comeback because you... You know, there's not enough time to make a comeback. Um... And I'm usually about 10 points away from victory every time I do it. But, so, the way, um, you know, there, and the rounds, obviously, because of the time limit and the rounds are each of them is half the time limit, there's just, there's no way to get a groove going. You know, you get pulled out of the action to respawn with the rest of the game, and there's no momentum or anything. Um, it's just something I didn't like. Uh, I think, it, it, honestly, if they would actually just increase the time limit for each round by about 30 seconds, I think that would fix a lot of the problems. Um, you know, it seems, just seems like a, uh, just a balancing issue with the time. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to when they realize that there's not enough time or when people start complaining there's not enough time and they kind of hot fix it. And then I'll be able to just kind of play it all the time now. And uh, that, that'll be nice. Um, and so then my, my third note would be for Capture the Flag. Um, it's still a three cap limit per round, which is something that even Modern Warfare started adopting because of Black Ops. And I do not like that. Um, you know, I won't lie, it still works. You know, it, it, it's a very, uh, for competitive play, it is it is a very the three cap limit makes competitive play hectic and uh, tense and you know on a competitive level it works. But if I'm in a public match, I want to get 17 personal flag caps versus the entire enemy team six. I like being that good that I can show off and be like, yes, look how good I am. Now it's oh look I got three flag caps. That doesn't sound impressive at all. Um, so, you know, it'd be nice if there were two versions of Capture the Flag, you know, if they had Capture the Flag, which is as it is now, and then, like, a classic Capture the Flag mode, where you could just have, like, 4v4 or 6v6, either would be fine, um, and then you've got the, the unlimited Capture the Flag for three minutes. I think that would be just a lot of fun, and would be something I would like to to do again without having to pop in Modern Warfare 2. Um, but like I said, the the current rules work, so I don't want them to change Capture the Flag at all because it works really well for competitive stuff and promotes communication amongst teammates and whatnot. But, you know, give me an extra CTF mode, man. Come on. You broke domination. Bring back my uh, old school CTF. Make up for it. Because, you know, sometimes I'm having a bad day and I just need to steamroll some kids. Uh, but I think that about sums it up. This video ran on way longer than I thought it was going to. Uh, so I'm just going to end by saying, uh, overall, I am pleased with the new Call of Duty. And uh, I look forward to discovering many more pleasures hidden beneath the surface layer.